So here we are, my new uh, Printer Build Part 2. I never rehearse any of this stuff, I don't do any script or anything, so um, I haven't really thought about what I'm going to say here. Well, I have, but I haven't kind of rehearsed it, so I'll just, I'll just waffle on and um, when I come to edit it, I'll, I'll edit out the ums and the coughs and the head scratches and everything else and hope that I don't forget anything. So quick recap on um, Part 1, um, where I was doing the remote... Um, drive pulleys and uh, adjusting the belt tension so I wasn't quite sure whether to use 6 mil bearings or 8 mil bearings and whether to use 20 teeth pulleys or 40 teeth or whatever so I made a bit of progress with that so I ordered some 6 mil bearings that's that so yeah now I see them in the flesh I think <laughs> it's still a bit small <laughs> so I ordered some 8 mil bearings so I changed the design to use 8mm instead, it was easy to do, I only had to change the, the size of the hole to take the bearing and everything else is ok, everything clears, so get some 8mm bearings, so um, they can go, can't be needing them, um, got some pulleys, 6mm ID, can't be needing them, uh, got some belts for the, um, connect the motor to the drive pulley, they should be ok, got some 8mm bore pulleys which I will need um, they were 20 teeth I've got some 40 teeth ones as well so that's that so yeah so I did some so whether to use 40 teeth or not I don't know so, so, so the reason was um, 80 steps per mil is 5 full steps per mil so working on full step principles then the resolution of the motor is 0.2 of a mil um, for positional accuracy shall we say so if I use 160 micro steps per mil that's 10 full steps per mil gives me a resolution of 0.1 but the motor will have to run twice as fast so my uh, the maximum um, travel speed that I like to use is 350 millisecond and acceleration of a thousand mil per second squared so to keep it mass simple I thought yeah okay let's see what that is at 360 millisecond so 20 tooth pulley a 2 mil pitch is 40 mil circumference so at 360 millisecond uh, that's nine revolutions per second which is 540 RPM uh, now I don't actually have a data sheet for the motors that I've got so I just looked sort of generically online to see a typical um, torque curve for a, a bipolar stepper and um, 540 RPM is at the top of the kind of flat bit don't drop at all and then it starts to drop off after around sort of 600 RPM ish just looking generically online if I double the speed we're talking about 1080 revolutions per minute or let's call it 1100 so looking at generic torque curves 1100 rpm the torque drops to around 76 percent ish of what it was at 500 rpm so it's a loss of 26 percent of available torque but because I'm using one to two gearing, effectively I've doubled the torque available on the gantry. So the motor in theory will only need to use half as much torque to drive the gantry at the same speed. And given it's only going to drop 26%-ish or 24%, whatever that was, we should be good. Shouldn't be a problem. Uh, then the other, the other constraint might have been step pulse frequency. So at uh, 160 steps per mil, at 360 millisecond, that gives a step pulse frequency of 57,600 steps per second, or micro steps, subsets, which is 57.6 kilohertz. And then looking at the spec for Duet, we're well within that. Um, the latest spec I've seen is for a single motor it's 650 kilohertz for three motors like a Delta it's 480 and I only want 56 so we're gonna be that shouldn't be a problem 
So she most likely used 42 pulleys and 8mm shafts. Right, that's that out of the way. So then, so working a bit more on the frame, um, I've done some more piggies. Now, I'm going to be using V-slot uh, gantries and so forth, just because that's what I've got. I, I guess if I was starting from scratch, I probably wouldn't use V-slot gantry plates and Delrin wheels and stuff. I mean, they're fine, they've served me well, um, but when you, but I always like to use um, double gantry plates. So if it's running on a thing that way, rather than just have a bolt on one plate and then the thing kind of being cantilevered, I put a plate either side. So the bolt is like an axle through the wheel. Um, it's just something I like to do. So I, I don't like to use bolts that are, you know, cantilevered in any way. Um, so I always put a plate either side of the pulley wheel or whatever it is that's going to be supported. So because I also want to enclose this printer, I've got to keep the, the edges of the frame side. So if you put a gantry plate either side of a bearer, you've got that gantry plate sticking beyond the side of the printer and it's wheel and bolt and everything else. So the upper Y rails, I've moved them in 40 mil. So I'm going to be using 40 by 40 extrusion for the legs. But rather than have the uh, the rail on the outside of that 40 by 40, it's going on the inside. So effectively I've lost 40 mil of travel on the x-axis because I've moved each one in 20 mil. Um, but my big old hot ends, they end up being they end up being quite wide. And uh, so I've been jiggling around with the design, and I've actually got. Oh, and the other thing is, um, the way I used to mount those hot ends was in between two parallel X rails. So it's kind of the weight was kind of slung in between because it's so bloody heavy. So I've decided on this one to use a single X rail. But instead of being 20, two 2020s, it'll be a single 40, 20, 40 deep, 20 wide. So when you use two parallel X rails, that makes it the whole carriage quite wide front to back. So by um, jiggling around with the design and so forth, I've got currently the axis limits are 340 million X because the Hot end is quite wide, and so were the Y gantries as well. So 340 in X and 368 in Y from front to back. So as far as I've got at the moment for my latest design, bearing in mind I've moved those rails in 40 mil, I've actually gone up from 340 mil travel to 371. So I've actually gained. Despite the fact that I've moved the rails in 40 mil, I've actually gained uh, 31 mil in total. So that's good. And then in the Y axis, I've got something like 417 mil. Um, currently, it's 368 because of the two rails. So by using a, a single rail, um, I've gained a lot of travel on that. So it's it's well over 400 mil, which means that the I can have a purge strip at the back of the bed so the, the nozzle can travel beyond the back of the bed and wipe itself on a purge strip. Um, so that's good. So I do that at the moment, but I've had to move the bed forward, which it actively, so there's a chunk of the bed at the front I can't use. Should be able to use the whole 400 mil depth. So that's good. So then just um, talking about the design process. Uh, here are some pictures that I've done. So what I do, um, having sort of got the basics of the frame done, I then position the drive pulley, and normally be the motor pulley, but in this case the drive pulley, at the front. And then from then, um, I actually model all the belts. Not too specifically, I mean I don't model all the teeth, but it's a... GT2 
uh, belt. So it's basically 1.4 mil thick and 6 mil wide. So I just do them as kind of cubes that dimension and whatever length they need to be. So first I put the, the drive pulley where it's got to go and then model the belts and make sure the belts don't clear the frame. And then um, so it is, uh, so you can see on this picture that the um, the bits that matter, there are certain bits that need to be parallel on a Core XY, as you probably all know, and other bits that don't matter. So that's that's what I do basically. Start with the drive pulley and then model the belts around that, which is what that picture shows. And it shows which bits need to be parallel and which don't matter. And then having modelled where the belts need to go, then I can put the pulleys in where they need to go, the pulleys and the idlers and stuff. And with a um, with a tooth pulley, measuring this, um, I've got an engagement with the pulley on the belt of about 0.8 of a mil, which means there's 0.6 of a mil proud of the pulley. So I position, when I'm playing around, I position the pulleys so they just touch the belt and then I shove them inwards 0.8 of a mil which is that engagement factor. For idlers which are plain then I position them so they're just touching where the belts are. So having got the belts and then the pulleys then you can build up the gantries and everything else where they need to be and make sure all the holes line up. So leave the pulleys fixed and then adjust the other stuff around it. Now this one shows my Y gantry idler pulleys and what most people do is have a single pulley um, got stack belts which is fairly common if you use a single pulley it means that the belts which have got to be parallel with the axis run either side of the axis so like the lower belt would be attached um, to the right hand side but slightly but forward of the right of the axis by whatever the pulley diameter is and on the left hand side it goes around, it's attached to the back so let's assume the pulley diameter was 20 mil it means that the, the lower belt is going to be on the right hand side it's going to be 20 mil forward of the center line and the left hand side will be 20 mil back so it's going to have a twist in forks which will be doubled up by the Y which will be 20 mil forward on the left and 20 mil back on the right. So if the belt tension is uneven, then it's going to tend to twist the carriage, which is going to, well, it's just going to just, if it does allow it, if you, if you build it such that it can twist, then it ain't going to be um, a parallel, it ain't going to be parallel anymore, it ain't going to be a true rectangle. Um, so now of course you've got to get the belt tensions the same um, but what I like to do is basically double up on the you still got to have two pulleys on the Y but I double up on the shafts that hold the pulleys so as you can see there so the pulleys actually overlap the upper one kind of overlaps the bottom one by a bit so that the belts are exactly um, in line vertically and on the center line of the carriage so if there's any unevenness in the belt tension it's not going to have a twisting effect on the carriage so this picture shows it looking at it from the side um, those, those, those are actually smooth pulleys it's just that they, uh, they look a bit faceted there because I didn't have a, didn't use the right resolution in, in OpenSCAD so they look faceted but in fact they're, they're plain so you can see there's about a mil separation between the upper and the lower so they don't collide that way and then um, but then there'll be spaces above and below but nothing like the same diameter as the pulley so then having got the pulleys then I have to design the gantry plates around the pulleys um, now it, it's a lot easier making things that are going to be printed because it's a, a monolithic structure it's just one lump but I'm going to make all of this out of aluminium so um, it's going to have to be in separate sections so that plate you see there there's the plate that goes on the rail which carries the wheels 
and then a top and bottom plate which will carry the um, idlers or the bolts that the shafts that the idlers run on but those two plates I'm going to have to make them separately and then drill and tap them and then on the plate itself there'll be clearance holes and I'll have to screw those plates to the back plate um, it's either that or get a big chunk of aluminium and mill most of it away um, saves me having to drill and tap it but it's, it gets expensive then in terms of material I've got time but I ain't got money so <laughs> that's why I'm going to make, uh, make it like that and bolt it together so it's a whole different kind of design process when you're designing something that's got to be um, sub additively made as opposed to subtractively made kind of so that's the inner plate and then this is the outer plate which I've shown I've shown the wheels I haven't shown all the spaces for the wheels but I've shown the wheels and how they sit on the slot so that's how that goes together so you can see there'll be the bolts that hold the wheels will be like axles so supported either side so that's what it will look like from outside all the parts are, are yellow that's just because they show up better like that they will in fact be aluminium so they'll be silver in colour so don't worry about the colour so I've um oh yeah um I didn't mention but the both plates have got then this rectangular slot at the bottom to take the x-rail so that that's going to kind of hang down from the y rails so it can it can slide left and right a bit um, now I'm conscious of the fact that I might not get those rectangular holes exactly right I don't want the rail moving at all so I've taken another chunk out of the back just to save some weight and I've got this little block which will bolt to the back plate but slotted holes so I can move it in and out plus or minus half a mil so that it's just touching the just touching the gantry so I can make sure that the gantry is perfectly at right angles the, the X is perfectly at right angles to the Y and then it will clamp using a, a T nut it will clamp the rail and it will stop the rail from going anywhere that's the plan anyway and then quickly that's just how they look from the top I've only shown the spacer on one side of the wheels there will be a spacer on the other side of the wheel so it's not going to flap around in the air like that so that's roughly it that's sort of I think that's probably enough for this update. The only thing that I've left to do on that really is the um, end stop uh, switch. This is going to be a micro switch. Um, so I need to mount that on the carriage and uh, have a, a, a flat surface for it to touch against. Or I could use um, optical switches and slots and flags and things. but. Um, I'll probably just stick with a simple micro switch there, cheap as chips, and uh, work well enough. So I guess that will do for part two, um, with more to follow. Um, thanks for watching, and hope you found it useful, interesting, or or whatever. Um, got anything to say? Leave a comment. So until next time, thanks.